Okay, we have multiple methods of training, but today we're gonna to talk about the Mac Daddy of them all, the max effort training and its use. The first thing we need to understand about max effort method is that we don't care how fast it moves. The max effort method is how much do you bench one RM? per se. So if somebody asks you how much you bench 1RM, you say, I bench 300. You don't say I bench 225 at 0.8 meters per second. They're going to look at you like you are got some major issues. So the max effort method is designed to test your straining ability. Nobody cares about speed with the max effort method. The max effort method's real ability is to teach you how to strain. Straining for most of us is not a learned process. It's something that when we feel that we're at maximum, our body's gonna to tend to want to shut down, not speed up. And by training the max effort method on a consistent basis, what you will find is that the max effort method will teach you how to strain and not shut down when you start to push to that major limit. Max effort training in a nutshell does not create a ton of mass. So if you're a female or an athlete that doesn't need to have a lot of muscle mass or can't gain a lot of muscle mass due to the type of sport and or weight class, max effort training works very, very well at creating strength over size, mostly for the simple fact that max effort training is neurological. What does that mean? That means that max effort training actually changes the nervous system more than it changes the muscles. So it doesn't really have you create more muscle fiber per se because the volume is too low, but what it actually does is teach you how to coordinate the spark plug from the brain to control the muscle tissue that you already have. So if you wanna be super strong and not get any bigger, the max effort method is for you. You have to understand a lot of different variables, both in science, biology, etc., to understand how max effort method works. The max effort method is probably the highest neurologically fatiguing method you can use. What does that mean? That means you can overtrain it very, very easily. But the max effort method is heavily used to get super, super strong. Knowing how to use it and when to use it is a whole other variable that we're going to touch to on the Patreon channel. Because the max effort method is highly neurological, it creates a ton of coordination both internally and externally. What does that mean? That means that the max effort method not only teaches you how to coordinate the external resistance, i.e. a squat, a bench, a deadlift, etc. It also teaches you how to coordinate each muscle group. In a heavy strained movement, i.e. a heavy deadlift, squat, or bench press, all those muscles have to work in synergistically together in order to create maximal movement and proper motor patterns. So the max effort method actually does create a ton of coordination and a ton of ability in that area. Now of all the things that the max effort method is really, really good for, coordination, maximum strength, ability to strain, etc., there are some limiting factors to the max effort method and one of those is low level of muscle hypertrophy. Because there's not really that much work being done over time, the muscle proteins really don't change that much. There's not much hypertrophy to be had with the max effort method. So there are limiting factors to the max effort method. You can't just go in and go heavy and everything's gonna fix itself. But it is definitely a method that you need to use in your training and a method that needs to be employed at a very consistent rate. What rate is that? Come to me with the Winning Strength Patreon channel and find out and we're gonna lay out when you use all these different methods, especially the max effort method.